Welcome, pen friends. This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens here again with another writing sample and unboxing. Today, we have this beautiful black box from Laban, Refill Your Soul by Writing. What's in it? Well, you should have a hint, possibly, if you've been paying attention to, uh, let's say, our newsletter or social media, that there is a brand new Laban pen that we've listed on our website. It's a continuance of one of the collections that has been pretty popular as of late. And it is quite beautiful. So we open up a black clamshell box. Le Bon 1981 is, whoop, and this kind of flipped up on me here, but it's a felt inner box. So it's a felt type of fabric, a little plush, and has this done up in a silver foil as the logo and whatnot. And the outside is rather nondescript. So if you were to keep your boxes, you might want to keep the sleeve as well because that would identify that this is a Laban pen that you're opening here. We have a pamphlet, has some filling system instructions, multiple language, always helpful. And we have the pen itself, which is a Laban 325 in Sun. So this is a part of a special edition that Laban has been introducing slowly to the market. It's done after their 325 slash Cambridge collection, which is a rather stately and large fountain pen. It has a this sort of like a little tag. So instead of a little price tag, you get a little Laban plastic medallion here. It's, I guess it's meant to look like a wax seal, but it's just plastic with a metallic imprinting of the Laban L with a laurel uh, motif done around there. Very nice. It comes with an international cartridge, as you haven't seen that already. Should tell you a little something about the filling mechanism on this thing to begin with. But let's take a look at the pen. So rather large pen, like I said, and uh, rounded end, so rounded finial end, a little bit more of a taper on the back end here than you have on the top of the cap here. Hey, it's Larry from Larry's Fountain Pens. Uh, Larry was uh, was giving Dawn a shout out in one of his recent videos. I appreciate that. And she was uh, quite excited to hear that somebody was calling and saying that you were speaking her good graces. So uh, just to get back to the pen here, we have the Laban L medallion that's at the top finial here. A couple of trim rings. The clip, which is done in an L bracket through the cap there. Then you have the shiny metal band here which you could then see some reflections going on you see me hello there i am so you have the uh, laban is laser engraved on that band so a lot of ivory looking resin which is this is definitely not ivory just so you know no one gets crazy about this, this is just ivory look resin which is done through and through nicely done solidly through the cap here and you have it through the front section as well. You could see those little minor striations through the ivory resin here. So you can see like different colors, a little slight variation, slight variation in translucency. Then you have a step with the barrel threads so that goes down to the cap here. And you have two trim rings that are here as well. It would be kind of cool if it was a little ink window so you could kind of see the remaining part of the ink that's left in the pen. But it's just my own little observation there. And then you have a trim ring in the back that leads to the end finial, which is the ivory colored resin. And the main piece about this pen is you have a beautiful, beautiful acrylic marbled barrel that has little spots of chatoyance, as well as a depth of color and that cracked sort of marbled look, little pops of white that are in there, and slight, slight, slight bit of translucency. So if we open up the section, you might be able to see the converter coming to and fro there, but not really. So it's very small, but I think you can notice a little bit of translucency through that material. So this is a cartridge converter type pen. The converter is already installed. It's uh, labeled with the Laban logo on here. It's a friction fit converter. You have metal threads that are here for the barrel, so no eyedroppering this pen, please. 
So the details as far as the sizing and the weight are in the description below. So if you care to find out how big this pen is, how much weight, how much unposted, how much posted, uh, all that detail is in the description below. So I will though, because it would be kind of cool to see it stacked up against a few other pens. I did bring a few other pens with me to kind of show a direct comparison. So I have the Estabrook Esty, not the oversized model, just the regular model. Then we have a 1911 large Rialo, and then we have the Conklin Duraflex. So to kind of take a look at these pens all together, give you a little bit of a frame of reference, and see how the 325 compares to this pen. So you can see, rather large. I mean, even the Estabrook's kind of, the Estabrook SD is on a larger side, so is the, the Duragraph's a little bit on the longer side. Uh, the 1911 Large, even though it's called Large, is actually one of the smaller guys in this lineup, a little bit on the smaller side. But when we look at these guys with the cap posted, so we need the frame slightly out here so we could capture all of this. So we can take a look here. You have the Estabrook SD and the LeBon 325, quite similar in terms of length and in terms of the overall girthiness of the pen as well. Comparing it with the 1911, 1911 large is a little bit on the smaller side, but still has kind of like that same sort of girth. Maybe the cap is a little bit more slimmer. And then you have your Duraflex, which is slightly longer, but is on the more cylindrical slash slimmer side overall. So overall, it's a pen that certainly has a lot of luxury look, luxury feel, and a size also that gives it that air of importance and just uh, grandiosity, as you will. So we're going to right with this guy I actually have another one it's kind of like it's stunt double ready and inked up with Monteverde's latest in their um, dessert line of inks which is pumpkin cake so figured people are downing pumpkin spice lattes why not fill a pen up with pumpkin cake so let's put these guys aside for right now And while I am, we could put this over here. Okay. Come find me at Gold Spot Pens. It's actually part of a other video that we're doing for uh, Mr. Penboy Roy. We're doing a little bit of an ad for him, so um, it's part of it. It'll be funny. You'll enjoy it. All right, so this is the... The bond three, two, five. This is the Sun Edition Fountain Pen. The nib on this is. A, it's, it's actually a Yovo nib. You can see a little bit of the uh, ink from filling it up there. It has the number 3952 on there with Le Bon in Germany. This is actually a Yovo number six size nib that can be unscrewed. You can see it's like a Yovo you know, plastic nib that's typical on those pens. Um, this can be unscrewed and swapped out for any other Yovo number six size nib that you may have in a variety of different brands. Uh, it's gold tone and stainless steel. So quite adaptable, and I mean, as far as in terms of writing, exactly what you would expect from a Yovo nib. You know, no flow issues, no star issues. This is a fine point. Pushing out just a slight bit of line variation 
in those swirlies there. Ink is Monteverde. And this is the dessert. Oh, I'm sorry, it was called the Sweet Life. And this is pumpkin cake. Pumpkin cake is pretty nice. It's a uh, sort of a reddish brown, leans a bit more towards brown than red, but has quite a bit of depth there. I probably should have gone for the mango mousse. Mango mousse probably would have been a little bit better of a match with this pen, um, but I was thinking pumpkin, you know, everything pumpkin these days. So one of the reasons why I decided to do this particular pen today was uh, that knowing that, seeing that on Instagram yesterday, that uh, one of our customers and friends of ours uh, that uh, we've been following and been talking with for some time uh, had shown up to one of our pen meets back in January, Mr. Uh, Thomas Blanchard, um, that someone, I guess one of his family members, had uh, posted on his Instagram account that he had passed away, uh, I think about a week ago. And, uh, you know, it's really sad to know that. And he was a big collector of Le Bon pens. And we actually, uh, he was affectionately named the King of Le Bon because he just had way so many Le Bon pens and was like one of the, you know, one of the people that Le Bon's really not that popular of a pen model. I mean, you're going to, you know, you're going to criticize me a bit for saying that being a pen retailer of Le Bon's, but it's really, when you compare it to, let's say, Pelican or uh, Mont Blanc or, uh, you know, Aurora, some of the bigger names out there, Le Bon doesn't really stand out from the bunch, but um, Thomas was a champion of that brand and uh, he really loved his Le Bon pens and bought uh, quite a few of them from us. And, uh, you know, we will miss him and we'll miss his contributions to the uh, pen community online. He would usually write with his pens, uh, you know, Leonardo's, Le Bon's, a whole bunch of different types of pens. And he would, uh, you know, he would show off the pen along with the ink color of choice of the day. And he would write a really inspiring quote. And you really enjoyed the contributions that he would make and, and try to inspire people in their everyday life. Um, and, and really show that with, with writing. And I could really appreciate that being, you know, a fellow person who not only enjoys pens, but enjoys shedding a little bit of light on people's lives and in any way possible, whether it's just sharing a quote or just showing a pretty picture of a pen. Um, so I, you know, really miss him. And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, his family are, are getting on and, uh, you know, that they could start their healing. Um, and that people in the pen community can also take a little bit of inspiration from him and and really you know go out there and write and try to be a light in other people's lives and um you know enjoy enjoy what time that you have here and and do it uh with passion you know so i mean just wanted to kind of throw that out there it's a little somber ending to uh this unboxing video um but uh but i felt like it needed to be done and that you know, it just really just shows, I, I just wanted to show my appreciation for, you know, hit what he had done and like his contributions within uh, the community as well. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, that concludes our unboxing and writing sample video. Uh, you could always find these beautiful Le bon pens. This orange sun also has a couple of brothers or sisters, you could say, uh, in the ocean blue and in the forest green. So the only difference that changes with those are the part of the barrel here that has the marbled acrylic. So there's also blue 
and a green one that look fantastic together. So everything else is the same as far as the gold trims and the ivory resin. And like I mentioned, uh, you can find these at goldspot.com. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And as always, stay inky, my friends. Take care.